Imagine this, you put 30 plus hours into a game, fight your way through hordes of enemies, solve brain testing puzzles, and even save the princess to have all your hard work be rewarded by a subpar ending that leaves a sour taste in your mouth. We've all experienced it. So to take a look back at the not so great conclusions to video games, here's our list of the worst video game endings. People love the Fable franchise because of the freedom you have to affect the game's story, with their endings showcasing the effects of all your hard work. Unfortunately, in Fable 2, players aren't given that courtesy. After the game's boss, players have the choice to resurrect either their dog, family, townspeople, or even just cash in all three options for lots of gold. What will you choose? With this choice, it feels like all the sweet gold you spent, and more importantly, the NPCs that died, weren't as big as a loss as the game led you to believe. Often, developers try to use their game's ending as a way to tease future installments in the franchise. If done well, they'll resolve the game's story while piquing players' interest. Unfortunately for Assassin's Creed, they missed the mark with its ending that left players with more questions than answers. It even had the protagonist saying, What does it mean, I wonder? Once the final fight is over, Desmond walks around Abstergo's lab for 15 minutes, then players notice mysterious ancient writings on the wall. Sounds cool, but the problem is the game doesn't explain to the players why Desmond is seeing these writings or what these writings mean. There was so much confusion that fans started forums dedicated to figuring out what the ending was about. Usually when you're playing a video game that's based on a movie like The Lion King, you're often not playing to find out what happens in the end. You've probably watched the movie and know exactly how it all wraps up. So it's hard for a video game to mess it up, right? Wrong. At the end of the Lion King game, players defeat Simba's evil uncle, Scar, by throwing him off a cliff into a pit of fire. Simba is left on the edge of the cliff, looking out to the distance, waiting, 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 and waiting some more. Before we hear a poor James Earl Jones impression say, Everything the light touches is our kingdom. With the awkward waiting to get to this point, and the out-of-place line from Mufasa, the whole ending just seems slapped together. Borderlands' story is very simple. You play as a vault hunter looking to find a vault and raise hell while you're at it. Although there's lots of hilarious moments and taking out psychos, at its core, it's a quest to find and open a vault, which you'd figure would be the big ending of the game. Unfortunately, Borderlands does just the opposite. When the vault is finally opened, it unleashes a huge creature that players have to fight called the Destroyer. After a long battle, players are only rewarded with more loot in the form of weapons that you already had. No resolution, just sloppy seconds. When a game like Harvest Moon has multiple endings, it puts the game's conclusion in the hands of the gamer, with the ending reflecting their progression. However, if they choose to do absolutely nothing for a whole year, Harvest Moon takes matters into its own hands and instead rewards players with possibly the worst ending in any farming sim. After getting yelled at by your parents, you're kicked off the farm and have to do the walk of shame off the farm. To make matters worse, your dog runs after you while crying and then is left alone waiting for your return. The ending pulls at the heartstrings and makes you feel guilty of everything you didn't do. Super Mario Bros. 2 was one of the weirdest Mario games ever made, and although it gave us some goodies, like playing as different characters from the Mushroom Kingdom, none of that made up for its ending. After defeating the evil wart, Mario and friends celebrate when the game zooms out to show that Mario was dreaming this whole time. Not only is the ending a cliche, it's not a surprise. The beginning of the game starts off with the characters waking up from a dream and discovering Subcon, the setting of the whole game. For a game that's so different for its franchise, it's hard to understand why developers would go the predictable route. Halo 2 was greatly praised for its near-perfect gameplay and multiplayer elements. 
However, its story was the game's only downfall because of its short length and abrupt ending. At the end of Halo 2, players see Master Chief flying through space to what seems to be the last level of the game. While getting ready for their next battle, players hear Master Chief utter words that Halo fans will never forget. Sir, finishing this fight. The developers did this to tease Halo 3, but faced criticism so much so that even they admitted this wasn't the way to go. For the most part, the Batman games have done a great job delivering fan service by staying close to the comics. However, in Arkham Asylum, the game decides to deviate. It's no surprise Batman's arch nemesis, Joker, ends up being the final foe. However, how he decides to go up against the Cape Crusader is. Joker injects himself with the Titan formula, making him a roided up Bane version of himself that goes fist to fist with Batman. Showtime, Batman! <laughs> Joker, the manipulative clown prince fist fighting Batman seems so out of character that it had many Batman fans questioning the direction of the franchise. When a game like Mass Effect 3 markets itself as a game that players can fully craft a customizable experience, it's disappointing when the ending doesn't follow through with that. In the end of the game, players were met with three choices to either merge with your enemy, kill or control them, thus voiding all prior decisions and creating plot holes. But you're taking away our future. Without a future, we have no hope. Without hope, we might as well be machines. Fans were so upset that they campaigned to have BioWare create a better ending. Other fans filed complaints with the Federal Trade Commission stating BioWare didn't deliver on its promises. The whole ordeal created a PR nightmare that BioWare will never forget. Fallout 3 had players adventuring through the wasteland, scavenging, and building their own story based on the decisions they made. As an RPG, it gave players the ability to visit the world they created and live within it, but Bethesda takes all of that away with its ending. Players are presented with three different choices, and it appears that their decision affects the conclusion. But it turns out, no matter what you choose, the game ends with a nuclear explosion, taking away the control players had on their story. To make matters worse, the game permanently ends for the player making it impossible to finish any side missions or revisit the world they worked so hard to build. I think it's time for us to say goodbye, old buddy. Take care of yourself, okay? 